Yeah. So excuse me, can you say hello to everybody and introduce me? Yeah, say hello. Speak louder. Hey, I say speak louder. What? Oh, sorry, he said I didn't on the volume. <laughs> okay, say hello everybody. Hello everybody. How are you? They don't look good. Excuse me, don't be so rude. Say they are all good. Yeah, I think they are good. You know good. Well, we are all good because God is good. Amen? Yeah, you are supposed to help me out. So easy. The door is there. You can get out. No, not go out. You help me to introduce me. You didn't introduce me. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, this is my friend Ernie. Everyone say hello, Ernie. Not a very good welcome. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, they, they want all of you to give him a big applause. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, this is my, my uh, friend Ernie. And what about me? And this is my friend Uncle Ellen, the watermelon. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I, I am Ellen Young, okay? Uh, also known as... Yeah, introduce me. Yeah, you can call him Mr. Ellen, Pastor Ellen, or Uncle Re Ellen, not watermelon. Yeah, not watermelon. That's right. Now, anyway, uh, like, like the, the, the difficult word uh, they, they call me is I'm a ventriloquist, okay? You're a ventrilo squid. I'm not a squid. No, not squid. No, I'm not a squid. Okay, so anyway, obviously, he is not talking. I can make you talk. What do you mean you can make me talk? I'm the one that make you talk. You don't talk, I don't speak. Yeah, if I don't talk, you cannot speak, right? That's right. I can be a ventriloquist. You can be? How? Speak without opening my mouth. Oh, you can speak without opening your mouth? That's right. How do you do that? You make me do it. <laughs> it looks a bit funny when you don't open your mouth. Really? <laughs> yeah, anyway. Well, today we are here not to entertain them. Why not? Entertainment is good. Yeah, entertainment is good. If you are not entertaining, then you are boring. <laughs> well, I don't want to be boring. But you are always boring. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm always boring? Okay, anyway. I'm here to share and encourage everyone with a few live words from the Bible. That's right. And uh, do you know what are my live words? I know. Yeah. Okay, can you share with them? Not going to do it. Why? Because I'm not preaching. Oh, okay. So who is preaching? You. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's give a big hand to Ernie. Okay, now. Normally, I bring, I bring my puppet in a box, but today, since I'm not working <laughs> as one, in fact, I have actually retired from being a, uh, what do you call, uh, an, an entertainer. Okay, so we are in the new year, okay? And of course, all of us are very, uh, I mean, I believe all of us, before the new year, some of you may have, you know, make some resolution or make prayers or make decision, you know, to, to look forward to the new year. But none of us know what's the future, right? And none of us know what's going to happen next. Actually, if you ask me and I ask people around, uh, if you ask me and ask people around like me, a lot of them don't have a very good outlook of, the year 2024, okay? Because things don't look good, okay? Uh, the world has so much turmoil and so much trouble. But anyway, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not 
gambling, but I like to do a simple illustration, okay? Uh, I have a deck of cards here. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to ask someone to pick a card, okay, and try to predict the card. Huh? Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, so, okay, so I think this lady here is busy, so I will ask her. <laughs> okay, can you just pick a card, okay? Okay, just, just take it and, and keep it there, okay? Now, uh, just, just, just in case you think all the cards are the same, they are all different, all right? All right? Now, if I can predict the card, uh, that, that is uh, fifth, 1 out of 52 chance because one deck got 52 cards. So if I can predict the card, you, you may say, oh, it's good luck <laughs> because of my, you know, I know I have good luck. I, I, I. But many of us, not you, but many people in this world will go to uh, what they call a fortune teller or they go to a soothsayer. Uh, when I was young, I tried to be a medium actually. <laughs> so that's another story. Why? Because they want to know what, you know, going to happen uh, to them. Okay, why? Because, or not, not because we are curious, because we want to be prepared for what's beyond. Okay, so uh, before even you pick the card, I have in my Bible an envelope that uh, I, I will ask my wife to take it. Uh, she's she's going to take it and, and she will see whether this card is going to match her card. Okay, that's my prediction of what she's going to pick. Okay, uh, so you, you can show everyone there's only one card in the envelope, okay, and show them what's the card. Show, show everyone. Okay. Okay, now, now I'm going to ask her to stand and show everybody what she picked. All right. Wow. So, did I predict correctly? Yes. Wow. So, I, I, I think uh, I deserve a big round of applause, right? <laughs> oh, well, that's nothing. It's just a card trick, okay? Uh, if you ask me how I did it, I just forced her to take the card I want her to take. But I tell you, I have read the Bible and I have read to the last chapter, right to the end. The beginning of the Bible talk about a tree, okay? At the end of the Bible, you also talk about a tree. Do you know that garden and it, it starts with a garden and it's going to end with a garden. God knows the future. Jesus knows the future. Because Jesus was at the beginning in the garden. He's the tree of life. And He wants all people to eat of Him and be filled and never be thirsty again. Simply means they'll be contented and fulfilled and happy and can live ever, ever after in the garden called Eden, paradise. But we blew it. Okay? And that's another story. But at the end, Jesus won. And that's the truth. Because at the end, you know, we'll be in that garden where Jesus will be the tree of life and everyone can feast on Him. Okay. So anyway, Jesus knows and Jesus holds the future. Alright. Now, today I'd like to share like Ernie was uh, sharing, we want to, I want to share some live words uh, in my life to encourage you to have live words for yourself. Okay? So, uh, the first live words that I want to assure all of you, this is not mine, but this is for everybody. Uh, for God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. So God says, I know the plans, I know your future, I know the plans. Plans to prosper you. The word prosper is to have peace and your well-being, your welfare, all good, okay? And not to harm you. A plan to give you hope. Hope is positive expectation. That means that you can expect all positive things of the good to come and the future. Okay, that's, you know, should be all our life words. 
That means that whenever we are unsure about our future, we can go back to Jeremiah. Everyone say Jeremiah, Jeremiah. 29 and verse 11. How many of you have heard these verses before? Raise your hand. Okay, good. I believe many of you have because it's, it's a very popular. So let's make it our life words. Means that these words that give us life and we are uncertain about the future, let's take this word and speak to our life and speak life to ourselves. Okay? That God knows the future and He holds the future and the future is good. You can be sure. Well, I can trust God for these words of life to me. And one of the, my earliest life words, okay, life words that I hold on to myself, when I was young, as a young Christian, I was blessed with some friends uh, who are navigators, and they helped me to grow as a Christian just for a short time. And in that short time, they taught, us, taught me how to memorize the Bible. I believe, uh, you know, when you come and study your Bible every Tuesday, is it? Huh? So, uh, you know, uh, one of the things you all will maybe do is to memorize the Bible. So I was taught to do that. And one of the earliest words I keep to myself, I keep to myself means I keep in my heart, is, you know, to trust in the Lord. Okay, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I can trust God for that. You can be very sure. Okay? And this is the, one of the earliest life words that I have for myself. Okay? Can all of us read together with me? It says what? Trust in the Lord with and lean not on your own in all your ways and He will make straight your path. Or make your path straight. Depends on what version. Well, uh, I memorize this verse by heart. Okay? Keep telling myself, trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding. In all my ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight my path. Okay? RSV version. Okay? That's how I memorize it. And, and when I was young, it's so easy to memorize. Because it didn't take me, I think I just have to read it two or three times. And after that, you know, I can, I have memorized it. And I keep repeating it. And now it is, you know, all there. I can still remember it. So young people, all of you look, uh, I'm 65. Anyone older than me? Okay, there are a few of you older than me, but the majority are younger than me. I'm 65. Okay, and I find it very hard to memorize. I, I still try to. I have, a, I have a new live verse that I want to memorize for myself. You want to hear what is it? Okay, I, I try to memorize it, but I only memorize it scattingly. It says, the righteous will flourish like a palm. Oh, something like that. <laughs> okay, see? So, not that I... So Psalm 90, 92, verse 12 says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. See, I got it almost all right, right? He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Okay, so I, I'm trying to memorize those words because I want to take that as my life words in my older age, okay? So I want to still bear fruit. And I believe that that's the promise of God's word. The righteous, I am the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Not because of all the good things I did, because all the good things I did are like filthy rags, the Bible says. But it's because of what? It's because of the grace of Jesus, grace of God. That Jesus, He gave up His righteousness and took our unrighteousness upon Himself and He died on the cross for our unrighteousness so that you and me can have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Wow! I am the righteousness of God. That's why I, say, I can say, I, the righteousness of God, will flourish like a palm tree. 
And in my old age, I will still bear fruit because I'm the righteousness of God. So anyway, that, that is the life words I'm going to practice, you know, in my older age. So I'm going to experience that, okay? So, but anyway, let's talk about these life words. Trust in the Lord. So the first question is, how to trust in God? At that time when I memorized, I never thought about it. But here the words itself tells you how to trust in God. They trust in the Lord with all your heart. How to trust? What is the word trust means? Trust simply means to believe, to have faith, to rely, to depend, and so on. How to trust in God? It says what? First, lean not on your own understanding. Do you know right in the beginning, I talk about the garden, there is not one tree, there is two trees. Means that unlike Ernie, Ernie is a puppet, Ernie do whatever I make Ernie to do. But unlike Ernie, you and I can decide whether I want to do or I don't want to do. So there's two trees. While God says the center of the garden should have one tree, but there are two because God loves you and love is something that you know, is not forced upon. Love is something that you can decide you know, to say yes or no. Just like, you know, when I, when I chase after my wife, she can say yes to me or no to me. I can say, I love you very much. She can say, I don't love you. What? <laughs> right? So you see, love is such. So when God make man, God make man different from all the animals. He make man to have a choice because he choose man to love. So man can choose to love or Reject God's love. And God says there's only one tree, or, or rather there's one tree that I want you to eat mainly. You can eat every tree, but one tree I want you to eat that is the tree of life. Okay, use the word eat. Huh? But one tree I don't want you to eat, and that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When you lean not on your own understanding means you will lean on Jesus. You trust Him fully. But the problem with all of us now, we can choose to lean on our own understanding, lean on the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, we always reason. Ah, this is better. How can I trust God's word? God says, just now Isaiah, give and you shall be given to you. Wow. But when I give already, I got no more. Sure, uh, God will give back to me. Uh, uh, you know? So you see, you will tend to lean on your own understanding. Okay, first thing, what it means to trust, always watch out that you don't depend on your understanding, depend on yourself, depend on your ability. Okay, that's the first thing. Then it says what? In all your ways, what? Acknowledge Him. Okay, so in all your ways, in, in how many ways? How many all is how many? Hampalang la. Sumwa. Everything. So in all your ways, acknowledge Him. In every little things that concerns you, it concerns Him. Acknowledge. What is acknowledge? Acknowledge means I heal Him. <laughs> you know what is heal? The, 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 the slang word we use. This means you, you know, you know that and be conscious that Jesus is there at the center of it all and should be in the center of it all. Acknowledge Jesus. Be conscious that He is and should be in all decisions of our life. Okay? So anyway, acknowledge also means what? We talk to Him. We tell Him. We pray to Him. We seek Him. More so, we listen to him. But anyway, just, just share a few uh, examples uh, uh, of what I've experienced. So in my younger lives, I remember when I was challenged to be baptized. So I was scared. What my mother, mother don't let my father, you know. So, but then this was a trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay, la, I trust you, God. I will want to obey you. So I asked my mother, Ma, no, in the Cantonese word, because my mom speaks Cantonese. Say, Mom, can I get baptized? Then my mom said, You ask your father. I ask my father. My father only come home once in a week or two weeks. Wow, so I wait for my mother, my father to come back. 
But anyway, to cut the story short, they both allowed me to be baptized because they saw some transformation in my life. Okay? So that was when many, many years ago. And not only that, my father and my mother came to witness my baptism. Praise the Lord. Okay, so that, that is what it means to trust in the Lord, okay, to, to dare to obey Him. But it also means other things. I remember when I was, you know, actually, uh, I, I had the opportunity to go and study in Australia. And, and the process was, in a way, a miracle, okay. So because uh, my father died when I was, passed away when I was in Form 5, and I thought, you know, because even though my father was quite, quite uh, well off at that time, but because of his, his death, uh, the family estate was all messed up. But anyway, uh, somehow the Lord made a way for me to study in Taylor's College and there was free education in Australia and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm not going to talk about that part. I want to talk about the part. So I, I finally got to go to Australia. You know, my family pulled up their resources together. Uh, but I do not have enough money to stay in the hostel. So I, even though I applied to go and stay in the hostel, but I didn't pay any money. So I was in the airport and I don't know where I was going to stay when I go to Australia. Actually, so my, what, what I was thinking, uh, what I was thinking, I, I just follow a friend. Uh, anywhere they stay, I just bang with them, for, you know, just until I find accommodation. So if they stay in the hostel, I say, hey, I bang with you for a while. So just be thick skin a bit. That was my plan. Remember, God says, I, I know the plan I have for you. <laughs> plan to prosper you. So that was my plan. But in my heart, I say, God, I trust you with all my heart. I don't know, you know, no, that's my plan, but I, I'm going to trust you. So in the airport, I met another friend uh, from, from another church that I know. Then he asked me, hey, Alan, you're going to Australia also? I said, yeah. Where are you going? He said, Monash. Oh, uh, I studied in Monash also. So where are you going to stay? He said, I don't know. Huh? You don't know where you're going to stay? Uh? I say, don't worry. I, I got a whole apartment to myself, my uncle's apartment. You know, so in the airport, God provided me a place to stay. Not for one night, not for two nights, for one whole week where I can find accommodation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, anyway, now, so the live words, the Word of God is really powerful and active and give life. So the promises of God is, the Bible say, Jesus say, yes and amen. amen. So you, you dare to live by it. Dare to claim it. Dare to believe it. Okay? So anyway, so trust in the Lord. So God says, I have a good future for you. Trust. You can trust. You can believe that God have a good future for you. Amen? Amen. Well, we don't know, but God do. We cannot, but God can. Just believe that. All right? Now, so Jesus can and Jesus will. So all the promises of God is yes and amen. So later on, after I finished my uh, studies uh, uh, upon my graduation, I remember I, I got a call, okay? So actually the call was much earlier when I was, in a, I was a younger Christian. I felt the, the call of God calling me to ministry, full-time ministry, you know? Then when I was in university, I, the, I was reminded of the call. But then at that time when I was in university, I was thinking, hey, you know, I, I want to be, you know, uh, I want to be rich. La, huh? I think that is not wrong, right? I want to be successful and rich. When I was in university, I studied accounting. Okay, I know there are good opportunities for me. By the way, I'm the first graduate in my whole family line. Huh? <laughs> so first one, they go overseas. At that time, very rare. Today, you throw a stone, graduate, graduate, graduate. Last time, very rare. So, so I, I was thinking, well, I want to drive a Mercedes Benz, okay? I want to live in a big house. So that was my dream. But then I received a call to go into full-time ministry. So when I came back, I was reminded of the call. So I was working in a, uh, a firm to, to do the accounts, and then I, I don't have peace. 
So I say, God, if you really want me to do this, you have to give me live words. Ah. But at that time, I didn't call it live words. I say, God, you have to assure me. Okay, you have to speak to me. And this is the word that God spoke to me. Okay, so can you read together with me? Say what? Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Well, let me tell you the story, okay? How this word came to me. So because I was struggling, I said, God, I want you to assure me, speak to me, give me, you know, give me assurance and promises so I can go and serve you. So I decided to take leave and do an audit for a company, uh, not take leave, uh, I, I take some leave and part of my leave is to go to the branch of that company to do an audit of the company's per, a branch in Alosta. So, and on the way, I will stop in Penang. And I know there was a camp going on in Penang, so I will go and join the camp first and then go to Alosta to do the audit. Okay. So, in the camp, I met my wife. Uh, that's part of the bonus. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, but in the camp, God spoke to me through these words. So, I don't know what the preacher was preaching, but these were the words that God spoke to me and I, 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 I know my problem. My problem is that, you know, I love, you know, to be rich. I want to be rich. And at that time, that was my preoccupation. And the reason why I'm not willing to give up then is because I want to be rich. And I know that if I go and serve God, in the, you know, they, even I went to talk to the people who's, that I'm interested to do the ministry in, I have to take a pay cut of 200 ringgit in 1983. 200 ringgit is a lot of money. I have to take a pay cut of 200 ringgit. So I was very reluctant. But when God says, keep your life free from the love of money, it helps me in a way to answer one of my reluctance. So I know it's, yeah, I... I have some gods in my life, idols in my life that I have to put aside. And then the promises of God says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. I don't know what you hear there, but what I hear is that, don't worry. Even though you may not be rich, you will be okay. And that was what I hear. So and here I say, God, I trust you. Well, I've learned to trust God before, right? So it's not now, not so hard to now trust God in His Word. And then God says, because you trust me that I will, you know, never leave you nor forsake you, God says, I will be your helper. Don't be afraid. So one of the things I'm afraid of is, what will my parents say? My mother say? Because my father passed away. What will my brother and sister say? What will my friends say? Because why? Hey, that time so hard to be a graduate. And then when you're a graduate, you can climb the corporate ladder so easy. And now I go and go and do what? You know what my grandmother say? So stupid. <laughs> uh, she tell my church people who visited her. You got Ellen, ah, come turn, ah. Yes, so we pay for no sake. My mother, my grandmother say that. So stupid. You think what? Jesus will feed him. Ah. Hey, years later, Jesus actually proved to my grandmother not only fed me but took good care of me. Amen. Yes, amen. You can say that. And well, when I was still serving God full time, God actually provided someone to help me to buy a low-cost house where all my brothers and sisters still haven't bought their house. I bought my low-cost house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But anyway, well, I can tell you so many stories. I remember one day, me and my wife you know, uh, I came back and I said, hey, uh, my wife said, the, the, the car, I was driving a van there, the van no more petrol. And then it was 22nd of the month, something like that. 22nd means what? I have to wait for another, normally 28th of the month, only I get my pay. Wow, no more petrol already, how? Huh? So, uh, so we were talking, you know, thinking, 
，哎呀 ，just just go to the bank and hopefully you know this month miracle happen, pay come out. Twenty second, I say no lah, but now I lah go lah, but no no more petrol. If we go drive to the bank ah, then less petrol. <laughs> but because trust in the Lord, you know, because God speak to us like this. Okay lah, trust God lah. Go to the bank ah, go to the ATM that time HSBC in Jalan Bukit Bintang. I still remember. Put in the card, we key in the pin number. Wow, <laughs> pay came out already. Wow, I'll tell you. It's not a gift. It's not a special gift or anything. But it's my monthly pay that came out one week before the due date. The when I need it. Wow! So it was wonderful. Praise the Lord. The Lord will be your helper. The Lord will be my helper. Amen. So as I think about that, wow. So just give me joy of tears. Well, actually, there are so many stories. I think some of you, if you know, if you are my Facebook friend, ah,、uh, you see me. Po- not me lah. My wife is the one that posts most of the time. She just tag me along. You will see that we are now living in a resort home. Seriously, I'm living in a resort home. Huh? Uh, where is it? It's called Tanah Rimba Jandabai.、Uh, you just Google.、Uh. You want to know what? Where is my house? Very easy. Just Google for T H R E E, ah, for three, forty three, ah, Persiaran Pine. Or you call for three, it will come out. Then you look at my home. That's my resort home. Okay, no, I don't own it all, ah.、Uh. My brother share with me, ah.、Uh. But no, it is you know the Lord that bless me. Hey, so from the low cost house to a resort house, well, you ask me how, ah.、Uh? I tell you, I don't know. The Lord is my helper; I will not be afraid. If it's not for Jesus, I don't think I can. Jesus can, and Jesus will. I can't. I don't know, but Jesus can, and Jesus do know. So you can trust Him with all your heart. You can trust him with your future, no matter what people say about 2024. You know that it is going to be good, because God is good all the time to you. Amen. Not because of who you are, not because of what you have done, not because what of what you will do, but because all that Jesus have done. And Jesus say, "It is finished. It is finished." Wow. So I. I don't know about you. So that became my life words. Why am I sharing my life words be, with you? Because I want you to take God's word seriously. Because the word of God is the word of life. Jesus is the word of life. And if you take Him seriously and you live by it, you too will experience the life He speaks about. That He is the way, the truth, and the life. That He says, "I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly." Take him seriously. Take his words seriously. Now, so you see, God is good, and God is my helper, and God has blessed me, blessed me with so much more. For what? So that I can be a blessing. As God spoke to Abraham, the promise to Abraham that you will be a blessing. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing to all nations of the earth. So I am the blessing. Okay, that I receive because of Abraham, and now I am blessed to be a blessing like Abraham. He is the father of faith. We are the children of faith, so we now can replicate the father of faith. Now, so when I was studying the Bible at、uh, maybe about in 2010, I discovered this verse. Okay. Uh, in around 2010, I know I've read Ephesians many times. Okay, as a Christian and also as a pastor, I read it、uh, a few times. But I discovered these words, and it really transformed my thinking. In the past, I thought I have to work for my blessing. In the past, I thought if I do good, God will give good to me. Yeah, that's what religion teach, isn't it? Religion teach 
Do good, you get good. Karma. They say karma, right? You know what is karma? That is basically what religion teach you. They say, well, well, not that karma is totally wrong because you play with fire, you get burned. Yeah, there's consequences in your action. Action gets reaction. So that's why many of us tend to lean on our own understanding. Wow, I must do this to get this. So, well, not that it's wrong to do good. It's, we are all asked to do good, right? But this is one verse that really transformed my thinking. What it says. Can all of us read together? Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. We have all spiritual blessings in Christ. So, I was studying this verse, and you know what? I discovered this. Blessed, the word blessed. Blessed, well, all of you know the word blessed, right? Is to get something positive, good. Now, blessed, the word blessed is in a tense in Greek, huh? okay, which is, was written. It's called aorist tense. Okay, there's no aorist tense in English. You only have past tense, you know, uh, other tense. But in the Greek, they have this tense called aorist tense. Means what? It's a verb. Verb means what? Action. It's an action that is done once. How many times? One time. How many times? Remember, only one time. It's an action, it's a verb that is only performed once and never to be repeated again. Wow. When I understand that, I taken aback. Means God already blessed you at one point of time in history and God not going to bless you anymore. Oh, yo. Is God not going to bless you anymore? No. The Bible says here in Ephesians 1, 3, God already blessed you once. All the blessings, God already blessed you. Where is it? In the storehouse in heaven waiting for you to receive. Wow! So it's not about what I do. It's all about what? He say what? In Christ. What Jesus have done. Wow! When I discover that, my heart is full of praise for Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus must be the center of it all. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. And He deserves our applause. Come on, let's praise Jesus. Wow, when I discovered that, I'm so thankful. You know why? Because at that point of time, I mean, I, I was already, a, you know, at that time I was an elder of a church. I was the lead elder, you know, in a way of a church. So I was struggling because, you know, I was always thinking of how, what else I must do, what else. But when I read this, I say it's not about what else I do, but it's now for me to believe what Jesus has done and for me now to claim it, proclaim it, and live it out and believe it. Okay, that's what I, I learned to do. I'm learning to do now. Okay, so anyway, I just want to share with you one verse that say the same thing in a way. Okay, can you read this together? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. The Bible says Jesus, though he was rich. Okay? Isn't Jesus rich? Philippians 2 says, Philippians 2 says, uh, Jesus, uh, have everything in heaven. All the glory, all the riches, all whatever, honor, whatever, whatever. Philippians 2. But then he lowered himself. Means what? He became poor. He gave up all his riches. He gave up all his glory and honor and fame and whatever, whatever, whatever. To become nothing. To become poor. He emptied himself, the Bible says. How many times do you have to do that? How many times? One time. Jesus only had to do that one time. He did that already, right? Have he done that? Yeah. Why? Why did he do that? Why? 
Yes. No, not just to love you. To love you is so cheap. The word, huh? love you is so cheap. Yes, he demonstrated his love. He became poor. Gave up everything so that you can have everything. That's what this verse says. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Jesus gave up every blessing that he has. He has all the blessed thing in heaven and he gave that up and he took upon all your curses and he stretched himself out to pay for the curses because the Bible says in Galatians curse is the man that is hung on the tree and Jesus was cursed for you and me so that you and I can be blessed isn't that wonderful isn't that great isn't that good? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we read this again? And this time, you read it for yourself. Okay? For I know the grace of my Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for my sake He became poor, so that I, by His poverty, might become rich. Can you, can you maybe make this your life words? This year, keep speaking life to yourself. When you see poverty in your situation, speak life to yourself. When you see a dead end, speak life to yourself. When you see trouble, when you see difficulties, when you see problems, when you see sickness, when you see cancer, when you see whatever, speak life to yourself. May God help each one of us to know that you are blessed. Everyone say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hey, not convincing enough. Say it again. I'm yes, I am blessed. And if you are blessed, huh, I tell you, uh, you look forward to come here because each Sunday when you come here, it's not about you giving to God. It's about God already gave to you, you coming to try to receive what you don't know you have. Do you know you already have everything? In Christ, everything is in the storehouse. One day you will go to heaven, uh, some of us will go to heaven, you know, and then you maybe complain to the angel, or complain, say, oh, so difficult, uh, life so difficult. You know what the angel will tell you? Hey, go to your storehouse. You look, wow, why got so many boxes? See, they are all the blessing that you never know that you had. All the blessings that you have that you never claim. All the blessings that you have that you never bother to find out. So my brothers and sisters, 2024 in the world, to the world, no good. I don't, I cannot predict the future. I can predict a card trick. I cannot predict the future. But 2024 to the world is no good. But to us, God is good. All the time, all the time, God is good. If you believe, stand up with me. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Come on, let's sing it together. God is so good all the time. God is so good. Praise the Lord. God is so good. He's so good to me. Father, we thank you and praise you that you are good and you are good to all of us all the time. Thank you, God, that we can trust your word. And your word says that you gave Jesus, who is rich, who is blessed, to give up his blessing, to be poor for us, so that we who are cursed can be blessed. And we who are poor can be rich. Oh God, we are blessed. We are rich in Jesus. And God, under the sound of my voice, 
all those who are standing, all those God right now who have a need, God allow them to see that they are blessed. They have their need, they have their need already met. God, I pray that right now you give them peace. Allow them to know that they have the peace of Jesus that passes all understanding. The peace that Jesus left us because you say you know a good plan for us, plan to prosper us, plan to give us peace and give us a good welfare and being. So God, allow them to receive this blessing right now. I pray in Jesus' name. Everyone receive it, says, Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Just tell your neighbor, you are fully blessed. You are fully blessed because you have come. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. Let's welcome the worship team and sing with leaders who want this song. Song this sing song all from your heart. Sing that, that you are fully blessed. So uh, sing it with all your might, all your strength, all your power that God has given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a wonderful start for a new year. Hallelujah. We are fully blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tama Yang Tarutama Tidalam Hidubini Maningi Kanama Yesus Yang Tarutama Tidalam Hidubini Mamulia Kanama Hallelujah! 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 Saya mau cinta Yesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Saya mau cinta. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I am Chinta. Some more time, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I am Chinta. Yes, He's worthy of our love. He's worthy of our praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am out. 
the same brother and sister in case you don't know it he would not give someone that is more talented everyone is precious hallelujah let's this year be the year that you and me know God loves us God is our helper God is for us who can be against us the world may against us but God is with us amen brothers and sisters if you have any questions any prayer requests come forward. This year, God has opened door, given us open door for gospel. Remember, you are blessed to bless. You are blessed with gospel. You are blessed with all the riches in heaven to bless others. Very but let the real life flow. Hallelujah. Brothers, you have find struggle in this area. You, you, you want to be blessed, and but you are blessed, and but you don't know how to bless people. Come forward. Or any other requests, you have any sicknesses. If any financial difficulty, help her come for us. Our pastor our Ellen Yaw and our church will pray for you. Otherwise, God bless us. God make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. God lift out his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. God bless us. Remember to come back again next Sunday, same time, same avenue. God same uh, uh, avenue. God bless you. God bless the Sabbath. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>
Jesus. 